what to do. So we want the equivalent of yoga block, yoga brick, a belt and a blanket. And then that should take us through the class nicely. OK, so we're going to come down just to let you know, I've got an iPad here. So I'm watching you from the side as well. So if I occasionally look in this direction, I'm just looking at you a little bit closer to where I am. OK, so bear with me. Let's flick that screen. OK, great. OK, so let's just come to sit. Let's take Sukhasana. So Sukhasana, a compact, compact cross-legged position. You're all familiar with this, I know. So your knees are approximately in line with the ankles. You've got your shins further forwards. You're going to draw your buttock flesh out and back and then hopefully that's going to position so you're in a nice steady upright position you can drop the shoulders you can feel a nice openness through the chest you can raise up your seat if you need to so i know that you're all familiar with this posture so you know what support to take so if you are collapsing in the lower back raise up your seat with a block if your knees are lifted and you're raising up your seat, then pop a blanket under your shins. Okay. And we're going to just bring our hands, we're going to bring our hands into Akasha Mudra. So this is the mudra of space. So it is the um, middle finger and thumb tip coming together like so. Okay. So just out of interest, if any of you are interested, the fingers and the thumbs represent all of the five elements. The thumb is the fire element. So this is sort of like the spark that sparks off the energy through the fingers. So, you know, it's mostly involved in most mudras. Then we have air, then we have space in the middle finger, then we have um, earth on the ring finger and water on the little finger, if you are interested. <laughs> Maybe you're not, but um, we're going to bring our hands into the space mudra. OK, so um, the space mudra. You know, this is a useful mudra to adopt because it's attuning us to space. Now, how it's attuning us to space, you might think, well, you know, how does placing my fingers in a particular position attune us to space? But it attunes us, it aligns us because we come to it with an intention to attune to space. So just feel into that now. Feel into your intention and your intention here is to connect with space, connect with space within the body. Connect with the space around the body. Connect with the space between the thumb and the finger. And connect with the space of your breath. And when we allow a deep connection with space and deep, you know, doesn't mean anything in particular other than you are committing to this connection. doesn't require us to be entering into a particular state so you know yoga is an interesting practice in that you know we can get an idea that it requires us to you know be a particular way or find a particular experience within our body but, you know, it does just simply mean integration. So that's the experience that we're looking for. It doesn't have to be this experience that takes us into altered states of consciousness. But it is an experience that takes us into, you know, full consciousness. This is what it's doing. Purnam, full. So find the flow of your breath. 
feel the contact between your finger and thumb without pressing your finger and thumb into each other. And notice how even in that direct contact there is space. Because every experience we have is experienced within the medium of space. Now as we're settling here into the breath, as we're releasing the shoulders, as we are just allowing ourselves to be, you know, this is perfect just allowing ourselves to be, not be the person doing yoga, not be your personality or character. It's not that we're not being those, but that's not our emphasis. You know, we can drop the emphasis on the limited identifications. So we welcome everything in. Like the famous Rumi poem that many of you may know, The Guest House. We meet everything at the door and welcome it all in. Now, what may have happened perhaps as we sit here is that, you know, for a moment we forget that we are the person doing yoga. You know, I hope, you know, that happens in many ways. Not that we're drifting off and thinking about something else, but we have just dropped into being. That's the purpose. You know, that's the goal. Perhaps there's emergence, it's emerging between the finger and thumb. That we can lose ourselves into, that we can absorb ourselves into, that we can breathe into. Perhaps we can feel the release at the inner groin area as the legs slowly give to the floor. The spine slowly rises up out of the pelvis. And we continue to drop into being, just simply being. Now I mentioned that, you know, we're not looking for the limited identification with aspects of being. It's not that we are not those things. But it's that we are, you know, they are just a small part of a bigger whole. Our personality, our character, the sensations that we experience, the thoughts, feelings and emotions. Even any experience of this present moment, you know, it includes everything. So we're going to chant a mantra that reflects that. So this mantra that we're going to chant is one of the, what are called the Mahavakyas. The Mahavakyas are known as the great saints of Vedanta, which is one of the influencing traditions of yoga. And the chant that we're going to chant is Aham Brahmasmi. Aham, I am. 
Brahma or Brahman in that, which is the all pervading nature of consciousness. Asni. So that within that. So I am the nature of Brahman, the nature of all pervading awareness, not just this form. I'm not just the ripples that appear within this form. So I will chant one round of it and then we'll chant three rounds of it together. You can either keep your hands in the current mudra or you may bring your hands to the heart center. So I'll chant once and then we'll chant three times together. Aham Brahmasmi. Let's take a deep inhalation to prepare. Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi. And settle your breath. And settle everything. And release your hand. We're going to come down to the floor. Now, when you come down, what you're going to do, I'm going to show you from the other side, but you're going to take your hand that's your arm that's furthest away from the screen is going to be the arm that's going to come out to the side. So you're gonna lay on your belly and do this, basically. So hopefully you can all see that my arm is out, but I'm gonna take my other arm because I'm gonna take my arm that's furthest from you. You can take your arm that's furthest from me. So there's a purpose to this because we're gonna to turn towards each other. So that arm is out at shoulder height, okay? Our other hand is on the floor. And then we are going to turn ourselves. So you're going to rotate yourself towards the side. Now you can have some support under your head if you need to. So if it feels too strong on the neck for the head to release to the floor, I'm going to grab a bit of support. So I've just grabbed a cork brick, which is not the ideal support. A flat brick would be better or folded blankets. And then you place your hand to the floor and you play here. So there's a pushing of the body onto the side, onto the hip, okay, to feel into that movement. And, you know, don't over push it. So you can have your hip leaning forwards if you need to. So, you know, you're not overly reaching into that back shoulder. So it's a strong stretch into the back shoulder. It's a fairly deep stretch into the chest so the pectoralis muscle of the side of the chest that you that is closest to the floor and that's it you're playing into that and it's breathing nice deep breaths okay not sure whether we are all muted i'm just coming to check that Okay, take some deep breaths. Feel into any natural movement that comes in here. Perfect. Okay, now roll yourselves back to the center, back to the floor, belly to the floor. You can place both hands on the floor, rest your head on your hands, either resting on the forehead or turning your head to the side. Breathing. And just giving yourself completely here. Taking a moment to feel that nature of, you know, all pervading awareness. So one of the elements of moving into this identification of, 
you know, moving outside the limited realm of just being identified with our own form, you know, does involve us to move through a few stages. You know, we can't go straight there to the recognition of I am everything without passing through a few stages because it tends to, you know, not be a true recognition. It tends to be coming more from the ego when we move there. So we have to move through the process of, you know, moving through the body, moving through the form that we have, moving through the ripples within that form. So the thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations that come up. And moving into the realms of prana, of life force, of energy. So these are our doorways in and we start to move closer towards that. So let's do the other side of this action. So bringing the other arm out to the side. So as we move through these stages, which, you know, this is what an asana practice, you know, is really, you know, beneficial. So, you know, sometimes we might not fully be able to access that solely from a meditation practice, might not fully be able to access it solely from an asana practice either. You know, they kind of go hand in hand because we have all these of these various aspects of being. So, you know, by combining these practices, it helps us to move through those layers. So what we feel, what the benefit that we can really gain in quite a quick way through yoga asana, through yoga posture, is that we are able to start to attune to the energy body. We're able to start to feel into flows within the body. So we may feel it in the form of heat. We may feel it in the form of, you know, particularly sort of, you know, rhythmic or fluttering sensations you know sensations that are not born necessarily out of you know manipulating the body into a particular shape you know we can feel sensations here into our shoulder because we are working into that area that is very much within the realm of what we might call um, anamaya kosha which is the sheath, the layer of the body, or we may call it deha, the body. And then we're looking to go into the deeper realm. So when we feel perhaps those more almost sparkling sensations that ripple through the body, then we're starting to attune ourselves to prana. And then from there, we start to move towards what you know, is known as shunya. After moving through, you know, various realms of being, we move towards space. So that's where that mudra that we practiced at the beginning comes in. This movement towards space. So we start to recognize that we are experiencing all of these aspects of being within that realm. And it's not just noticing that we are experiencing within that realm. We start to move our identification into that realm. Okay, so it's not just that we have the body within space. We are space. Okay, let's roll ourselves back to our belly. Hands on the floor. Again, support your head on your hands, either forehead down or turning your head to the side, playing into it. You may move your body if you need to. Perhaps you need to have a little wiggle through the hips. Perhaps you need a deeper breath. So by a deeper breath, I mean a breath that you are fully attentive to. A breath that, you know, you sink yourself into the awareness of that. The depth of our breath is based on the depth of our awareness, not our ability to suck in more air into the body. 
you know, we don't have to override that natural breathing mechanism, you know, that, you know, the body has, the body is breathing, the body knows how much air it needs at this moment in time. Sometimes we override it deliberately to direct prana in particular ways or to reset the breath. But most of the time, what we, how we should be meeting our breath is with a surrendering to the breath and letting go into the breath. Okay. Now bring yourselves up onto your forearms here and place your elbows beneath your shoulders or a little further ahead. We're going to lift and extend our legs back behind us. So lifting them one by one, reaching back. So you're opening up this space of the front groin area. You can, you know, stay active in your legs, stay active to reach into your toes, deepen your forearms into the floor, lift up through the chest, shoulder blades deepening into the back of the body, and maybe sway into it a little. Your forehead is soft, your jaw is released, you're giving yourself here, you know, completely, completely. So notice any part of you that, you know, may not be, you know, fully committed. And see if you can coax it in, coax it in with your breath, coax it in, you know, with the promise that we can experience space within. Breathe, chest is drawing forwards. Okay, well done. Let's just tuck the toes under as we release the arms a little to start to lower down. We should get a little release through the lower back and buttocks. And we're going to shift our hands so we can place the tips of our fingers in line with the tops of the shoulders. And then we're going to press into the hands and we're going to pull ourselves up into Adol Mukha Svanasana. You may need to perhaps adjust the position of your feet and hands. We want a nice long stride on our mat. Okay, so we can, you know, really feel the length through the body. You know, you are extending the body into space. So let's just try that a little with one hand at a time. So just find your balance. Let's raise one hand up and reach it forwards. Press into the supporting hand, reach the other hand forwards and place it down. And then lift up the other hand, lift and extend forwards. Try not to drift too far forwards with your hips. And then again, draw the top of the thighs back. Okay, perfect. Now breathe, feel into it, sway into the pose as if you need to, if that's a useful action for you, you know, you, all of these instructions are offerings. They are offerings that may or may not lead you into yoga. So, you know, you have to keep continually checking in with your body. Does this take me deeper into the nature of being, into a humbra masmi? Does it take me there or does it pull me away? Do I get pulled into, you know, the limited individual aspects of being? Breathe. Okay. Let's lean ourselves forward so we have our shoulders above the wrists. You can bring your knees down to the floor if you need to. So, you know, I know that... You know, there are some shoulder issues in the group. So, you know, you don't have to take that full support if you need a bit more um, space there. Extend back into the heel. So we're making this straightish line with the body. Now, we're going to just push back as though we were coming into downward facing dog again. But then we're going to walk our feet forwards. We're going to walk forwards, bring the feet to hip width apart, bend the knees and just pour the body forwards. Breathe. Now play again here. We are looking to perhaps bring our legs to extension, but for some of us, you know, we're gonna keep our knees fully bent. For one or two of us, we may benefit from grabbing a block as well. So we can then play with extending the legs towards being straight, but we've got the block so 
we don't lose that length through the front of the body so we can extend the chest forwards. Now use whatever you meet in the posture as you know your entry point, your entry point into this connection with the nature of being. So it might be that you know what you're using for your entry point is your breath. It might be that you are using the sensation in the back of your thighs for your entry point. You may be using, you know, the depth that you feel through the feet and perhaps the shifting of weight around the feet. Maybe that's your entry point. Maybe sinking your attention into your heart center is your entry point. There are possibilities that, you know, there, there are infinite possibilities. Sometimes, you know, I can just, because it's just come up for me now, the slight itch on the end of my nose, which could be something that would be an irritation and the desire to perhaps scratch that itch. But I've got the opportunity to meet that as you know, a sensation that is a fluctuation within the realm of consciousness, but that can lead me into yoga because, you know, my attitude towards it can be an attitude of acceptance can be an attitude of recognizing that you know it's part of the whole i don't need to get rid of it welcome it in okay we're going to bring ourselves up so you can either, if you are using a block, you can come up through the levels of the block, which is a useful way to come up without overly taxing the body. You can bend your knees and transfer your hands to your thighs, press into your thighs so you straighten your arms. And it's just coming up slowly, which is useful for most people because when we come up having had the head down for so long, we can get a little dizzy sometimes, particularly if you have a tendency to low blood pressure. So, you know, feel, feel your, your way up, excuse me. Feel your way up at the pace of your body. Move as you need to move. Drop into a stillness. If that's your entry point, Maybe your entry point is to just be really still within the body, not to hold the body or pin it down to be tight, but to relax the effort, to relax the effort to move into what, you know, what we call effortless effort, prayatna, shaitilya, it's described by Patanjali, the relaxation of effort that leads us to the non-dual state, tato duan duan abhigataha. The non-dual state, the state of this recognition of us being part of the whole. Comes in part from relaxing our efforts. So there's an acceptance of this moment, but also by placing our attention into the infinite. So we draw into the heart center. We draw into awareness itself. So as we draw into the heart center, what we do is we place our awareness into the heart center. And that will start to lead us in. But ultimately, you know, we have to bring our identification into the awareness itself. And then that's, that is the sort of, that's the dramatic entry point when we can drop into that. The object can fall away. And we rest in knowing. Move from. Avidya to Vidya, 
from not seeing to seeing. Okay, we're going to turn ourselves towards the long end of the mat so you can maybe face towards the screen if you know, make sure you are within view. And we're going to you know, make sure the mat is clear of any props. And we can just bring our hands on to our hips. Just find a little lift up through the torso. So looking for this space, this length through the waist. Perfect. And then we're going to take a wide stride across our mat. Nice, generous stride. And then maybe it will inspire a deeper breath at this stage. So just feel into that, feel into the inspired deeper breath. And the deeper breath again, it's not about gaining more air into the body. It's about feeling, experiencing the breath deeply. Okay, let's turn our left toes in, lift up the heel, extend it back. Turn the right foot and leg out, front heel lining up the, with the back instep. Toes spread. Breathing. Feet deep into the floor, rising up through the legs, rising up through the midline of the body. We're going to bend our front knee and we're going to extend through the thigh bone so we can open there into the front groin area and sink ourselves down so there's a there's a rising down to lift up so there's a dropping down here a lowering down of the pelvis to rise up through the midline of the body so see if you can connect to those two actions happening simultaneously the hips are moving down we're extending up through the midline. We're going to follow that extension by raising our arms up above our head and interlacing the fingers, extending the middle fingers forward. So that pointing finger action, left thumb over the right thumb. So you know, it's like that Charlie's angel pose that people like to do. Um, and we extend up, we extend up into that point of the fingertips. Now we need some tone in the belly here to support us for the next stage of this. So there's a gathering into the center here. You may release your hands from this mudra when we come over in a moment, if you need to, to stack what becomes your lower arm onto the thigh. We're going to come into Pajva Konasana, side angle pose. We're going to reach into the fingertips. So we're going to lean the body over to make this sort of straight line between the back foot and the fingertips. Now this can be super strong. If it's too strong for you, bring your forearm onto your thigh got nothing to prove so feel into it breathe now reach into it let's bring some energy into it let's really reach into that book back foot and into the fingertips perfect okay well done draw your arms down as you extend the legs up that's a little bit like the charlie's angel gun position isn't it Okay, turn your feet to the front. You can release your hands down and just release your hands completely, actually. Let the shoulders release. Check the alignment of your feet so that they are lined up with each other. If you need to step your feet back together for a moment or two, go ahead. Find your breath. Perfect. Okay hands to your hips so this is just a useful um, placement of the hands it helps us to feel nice and stable in the posture so there's also a little purchase here that we can use to encourage the lift up through the torso let's turn the back toes in so the right toes in heel out front foot and leg or what becomes the front foot out so the left toes out whole leg out Okay, and we're going to again bend the front knee and extend the thigh bone forward. So your knee, the trajectory of your knee is sort of 
to the second and third toe. So that's where we are aligning. So we're watching out for any drifting of that knee. We're keeping it nice and stable. And again, there is this sinking down to rise up through the midline of the body. We're going to raise our arms up as we did before. We're going to reach up into the fingertips. We're going to interlace the fingers, extending the middle, uh, sorry, the index fingers forwards, wrapping the thumbs over one another, reaching up, light tone in the belly, lifting the chest. This is Kali Mudra that we're moving our hands into Kali. So this goddess of time, she transcends time. And that's, you know, in part, what we are able to do in our yoga practice. You know, when we really drop in deeply, so when you're ready, moving over to the other side, you know, we can be in a posture that is fairly strong. You know, we can hold it much longer than, you know, we might hold it if we are, um, you know, meeting the posture you know, just purely on the physical plane and feeling, you know, how strong it might be, how much effort there is there. But, you know, we transcend that by going in, by going in through the breath, by feeling all of the sensations, all of the arisings within our experience as just ripples. Okay, let's press into the front foot, inhale and come up. Well done. Let's turn our feet towards the front. Let's release our fingers and lower our arms down and just release your arms, settle your breath. Feel whatever is here now within your experience. You know, Walk your feet in a little closer towards each other to come back to the center. Bring your feet in towards each other. Release your arms down by your side. Deepen your feet into the floor. Rise up through the midline of the body. A little light tone in the belly. Feel the length. Now let's see if we can really do this now. Feel the lift and length through the exact midline of the body. So we can feel from between the feet. We can feel coming up, arising up through the inner legs. Up through the center of the pelvic floor, up through the center of the torso, up and out through the center of the head. And then when we really attune to this exact midline of the body, that lengthening, we're able to soften everything that is around that midline. The midline, you know, it's like the tent pole in a bell tent. It's lifting up so everything can be draped over it. Everything is supported by that midline. Breath flowing. Okay. We're going to come down onto our mat and we're going to take our belt. Now, hopefully, most of you have got a yoga belt by now. I don't know how many weeks we are into lockdown, but you know, hopefully, you've purchased a yoga belt by now. But you know, don't worry if you haven't. You can make it work with a dressing gown belt or scarf but what you do want is we're going to want a long length of belt so we're going to come and sit down just have your block and blankets nearby because we may need these for some support and you're going to take your legs out into a wide stride so stepping your feet out wide drawing the buttock flesh out and back 
okay now I know that most of you are very familiar but you know always check in and feel your body today don't think oh this is what I normally do and this is what I need to do just feel your body today and come into that so once you've made that adjustment if you then feel a bit collapsed today then you may sit yourself and reach my block on a block a corner of the block forwards so you're supporting the buttocks completely you're allowing the thighs to release now we're going to take our belt and we're going to pop the belt around the right foot now what we're going to do if you've got a yoga belt this is ideal because you can use the buckle here we just want one length of the strap often we're holding two sides but we're just going to create one length of the strap so you can wrap it around your foot like so and we're going to take that belt just behind us for a moment okay that's it so if you're using something that's just a regular kind of strap <coughs> excuse me without the buckle then just tie it you know to the short end right at the end so you've got more length okay now we're going to place our fingers either onto the floor in front of us or onto the floor behind us or resting your hands on your thighs and then again find your breath so reorientate back to your breath depending on which um system we might be using you know we have loads of sort of maps territorial maps we could call them within the yoga tradition and dependent on which aspect of tradition we're taking it from but these territorial maps are you know sort of um, guides of how we move from the gross element of being to the more subtle element of being So some of you may be familiar with some of these systems, whether it's the Tatwa system, which is the system of um, manifestation out from the ultimate point of consciousness down to the lowest level of the elements. Or whether it's the Kosha system, which I've already mentioned brief, briefly earlier which is the layers of sheaths that move us into the deeper layer of self or the tantric diagram, which is very similar. So we just start with that which is obvious. That's all we need to know. We don't even have to know any of these things. You don't need to root out this information in a book, any information that can be obtained and stored. You know, it's not really information. It's the information of knowing of Kiana or Vidya is here now. So we feel into the physical body. We feel into the rising up through the torso. We feel into the breath. We feel into the more subtle sensations that may be arising within this. Now we're going to move into a twist from here. So you're going to take your left arm behind you. So this should be the opposite arm to where you've got your belt positioned. Okay. And then you're going to pick up that belt. So you can use your other hand to feed the belt into that hand. And then you're just going to, you're going to walk your hand down the belt a little, not too far. Don't force it. And as you walk your hand behind you down that belt, going to encourage your body to turn towards the other leg now often what we'll do is we'll place the belt around the leg that we are turning towards this is what we do more frequently now we've got the belt around our back leg this time because i wanted to encourage us to keep that leg within our awareness it's so easy for us to be pulled out from you know, um, wherever we turn away from, we can be pulled away from our awareness of that. So as you turn away from that leg, you can feel that leg. We can feel that leg is really engaged in this posture. It's still part of this posture. Your free hand, I know I'm waving mine around in all places, so I talk, but you know, you can place that hand wherever it's useful. 
wherever you find it's most supportive. And then just feel into your breath and feel into being. And it's a wonderful thing when we really do feel into being. Because in that feeling into just the purity of being, you know, we're not troubled by any selfing, any thing that may perhaps pass through, you know, our personalized experience of consciousness that may bring disturbance to the flow of being. We are dropping into that element of space. We're dropping into shunya, the void. And we feel freedom there. Because there is no me, or I, or mine. There is just being. Okay, let's roll back into the center. So just let the body realign to the center, release the bow, play into any movement here, play into flow. Give yourself completely. Give yourself completely. Okay, now we're going to take this leg, the, the leg that is free of the binds of the belt. Okay, and we're going to draw that leg in towards us. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our heel in towards its own leg, but it may be in towards the top of the opposite leg. You're just going to draw that foot in. Now, again, you may be sitting on a block already. You can adjust that block a little if you need to. So you're sitting, so the buttocks are fully supported, but the thighs are dropping off the block. You might need a bit of support underneath this bent knee. So feel free to grab a blanket and pop it under there if you need a bit of support. Okay. And then find this rising up when you're ready. Find this rising up. And it's light. It's free, it's fluid, you can play with it, this stage. Use it for exploration. Okay, now we're going to do a similar action. We're going to turn away from the leg that has the belt around it. So again, we're gonna place that belt behind us. We're gonna take the opposite arm behind our back as we did before. We're going to hold the belt and we're going to lift and we're going to turn. And this time we're going to cross that front arm, perhaps to reach the knee. You know, this is going to be dependent on the length of your torso, the relative length of your arm and the relative length of your femur, your thigh bone. So if you can't reach your knee, you can just take your hand to the outside of the thigh. Okay but don't reach the knee by having to bend over. We want to keep that length. We want to keep that space. Akasha. Space. So breathe, breathe into whatever you meet here. You know, yoga we could say is this practice of Atma Vichara, self-inquiry so this is a huge practice of the uh, sage Ramana Maharishi who advocated this practice of self-inquiry constantly moving into the nature of being or asking who am I and it's not an intellectual reflection it's to feel into you know, who is it who's experiencing this pose now? What lies beneath all of the surface experiences? Okay, ease off, back to the center. Take a breath.
Okay. Let's draw that extended leg back in towards us for a moment or two because, you know, you may need to ease off that stretch through the inner thigh, through the inner groin. You can bring your legs back together. You can give them a bit of movement. We are going to go to the other side. So you might want to pop your belt ready over the other foot. And then in your own time, when you're ready, take your legs out wide. So a wide stride. Extending into the heels. Taking support as you need. So all of those same adjustments, we draw the buttock flesh out and back. You may support the turn perhaps of the thighs as you do this. So one hand on the thigh to um, create a little internal rotation of the thigh there, which draws the buttocks out and sets the pelvis into better alignment. So we're able to lift upright with ease. You know, we don't, it doesn't require loads of efforting to get the body upright. And if it does, it probably means you need to raise up your seat to pop something underneath you. If, you know, you're really having to push your body up. Okay, pause, breathe. Hands on the floor in front, behind or resting on your legs. But we should be able to feel that we can. Again, we can attune to that midline. This area that is just in front of the spine. That is like a column of energy. Okay. Now we're going to turn ourselves away from the foot with the belt. So we, we should be turning towards the right side. So taking your right arm behind you to take hold of your belt. If you have done the other leg, obviously swap that around. So it's opposite arm, taking a hold of the belt to the opposite leg. And you can walk the hand down the belt and find that turn towards the other leg. Hand to the floor, breathe. So just feel, you know, that awareness of the back leg. You know, it's a wonderful thing. You know, if you do have the luxury of having two yoga belts at home, you may want to practice this in future with a belt around the other foot. And that is a wonderful position to come into because you can feel really held. Maybe that's inspired you to buy a second yoga belt. It is worth it even just for this posture. So pause and breathe, pause and breathe. Top of the thighs descending towards the floor to create freedom in the inner groin, to create lift through the torso, to create space. Okay, we're going to release our arm from behind us. And then we're going to bend back that leg that we were turning towards. Use your hand to support you to draw the leg in. Pop the heel in perhaps towards its own thigh or towards the top of the opposite thigh. Perfect. Okay. And then we are going to Again, find that lift. We're going to be turning towards the bent knee. So don't forget, you need your belt behind you. You're going to bring your arm around. You're going to take hold of the belt. You can use your other hand to feed the belt into that hand. And then allow this natural turn towards the bent knee. And then you can perhaps cross your arm in front of your body to take hold of the knee. So, you know, there's something that's quite comforting about finding a bind because it brings everything together it draws everything together we have this famous phrase within the Upanishads about the breath the breath being the drawer together so you know it's in a reference to the breath bringing all aspects of being together 
and you know we often find or you know it's my experience that I find you know when I make contact between the various parts of my body and come into a supported position where you know there are elements of binding then everything gets drawn together and the breath is a central part of this focus everything can kind of get sucked into the breath and everything can fold back in on itself into our center Okay, well done. Let's slowly release, return ourselves to the center. Bring that bent knee in slowly with care. There's no rush to come out. Bring the other leg in. So place your hand behind your knee so you've got a bit of support there because, you know, it's hard for us to get those muscles on the inner thighs to engage after the long deep stretch that they've received so we help and then we can move perhaps move through the legs what can be nice after any posture where you know we've had to use the postural muscles of the upper body to keep ourselves upright is that we feel that we might want to ease out this lower back so a nice way to do that is to place the hands on the floor behind us now the position of the hands you can find the position that works for you so externally rotating the arms a lot is really nice because it opens the chest but um, it can create a little compression into the elbows so you may turn the fingers out we're just going to simply press into the hands and lift up the chest that's it breathe so you're creating a little bit of space in the lower back you can feel that opening of the rib cage Move your head and neck as you need to. Soften your forehead, release your jaw. Okay, well done. Ease off slowly. Have your belt to hand and bring yourselves down onto your back. So lay down head on the floor feet you know, far enough away from the buttocks so you can feel a little bit of space in the knees in the back of the knees a little bit of space into the front groin inner groin area hands on the belly feel the weight of one hand on top of the other and both hands on top of the belly just follow through the placement of the hands and find the breath so we can feel a little steady movement of the breath a little steady flow your forehead can soften your jaw can release Perhaps you might have your eyes closed if you are comfortable to have your eyes closed. But if your eyes are open, you know, stay um, soft in the gaze. Stay soft in the gaze. Okay, now I'd like you to take your belt. I'd like you to raise both legs up towards the ceiling and pop your belt around the front of the heels. So it's in 
hopefully you can all see from there I'll come over so you can see I think you're all familiar with this I don't mean to teach you to suck eggs but I'm going to show you anyway so it's not quite into the full arch of the foot it's there at the front of the heel you can see that there okay and that allows a deepening of the thigh bones into the hip so we into the hip joints so we get this sense of stacking the legs okay now of course you bend your knees if you need to but um you know if you can extend the legs towards um straight i don't really like using straight to extension then go ahead so it might be that one or two of you might have to have your feet a little further away now just feel into that if you can through this contact your hands have with your belt there's a little resistance here because the feet are pressing against the belt and we're pulling on the belt so that resistance is hopefully sending a depth up through the legs towards the hip joints and we're breathing into that okay now if you feel fairly open in the back of the legs and this feels fairly easeful you may then take your belt around the balls of your feet now if you find your feet feel a bit crushed together in this action you know feel free to Pop a little bit of padding between your feet, like a little folded sock between the ankles or between the base of the big toes if those areas are being squished. And then just breathe, just breathe. And I want us to play into the edge of that stretch through the back of the legs. So we're going to pull on the belt and perhaps allow the legs to draw further over. Now, as we allow the legs to draw further over, we may be able to walk our hands up our belt. That's it, play. Breathe. And it might be that perhaps one or two of you come to grab the feet. It's okay if you do, it's okay if you don't. Doesn't really matter either way, it's sort of an incidental contact that's it breathe okay we're going to ease off now release the belt release your feet to the floor would love to go through a little bit more work here with the belt but it's Friday night and I know that you're all depending on it being Nidra night. So we're just going to release our feet to the floor, settle into the breath, settle into the sensations that we can feel that are dissolving us now. Dissolving the what's called as nita, which is the limited sense of I-ness. The aspect of me, myself and I. Dissolves, it dissolves with the release of the leg. It dissolves with the softening of our breath. It dissolves with our giving to this pose here and now. Okay. You may roll yourselves onto your side to come up from your side. You're going to be laying yourselves down for Shavasana. So I've brought you up so you've got an opportunity to um, 
get on warmer clothing. Perhaps you might like because we're lying here for a little longer than a regular Shavasana for our yoga nidra practice. You might like something behind your knees. You might want something underneath your head. And I recommend that if you are on a, a hard floor, I recommend that you have something beneath your head just because it can get quite hard after a while. Maybe if it's carpeted, you're fine with your head directly on the floor. So, um, you know, I want you to just be comfortable. So any niggling discomfort that comes in whilst we're practicing can, um, you know, it can impact our ability to fully give to the pose. So to fully give to the practice. So one of the elements of yoga nidra is that we look, you know, to completely offer ourselves into this practice. Okay. We look to completely offer ourselves into this practice. So if there's any part of us that's pulling us away, you know, that is pulling our attention away from being here because there's a bit of minor discomfort. And, you know, we don't fully give to the practice. So, you know, take your time to get yourselves really comfortable. So laying down. Just giving your body to the floor. Making any last adjustments that you need to make. And finding your breath. Finding your breath. So as you find your breath, I'd like you to just notice the space from which you draw your breath. And follow that journey of your breath from the space, the full space from which you draw your breath. Into the directed point of where your breath reaches into. And as you feel this pull from the external into the internal, and this giving from the internal to the external, just repeat to yourself, I am now practicing yoga nidra.
Now turn your attention to the physical body. We're going to move around the body with our awareness. So simply follow my voice, take your attention to each location with my voice. And just hold each location within the realm of space. The soles of the feet. The tops of the feet, the ankles, your shins, your calves, knees. thighs, the pelvic floor, your pelvis, your buttocks, your abdomen, lower back, your rib cage, your chest, your shoulder blades, your collar bones, your shoulders, your armpits, upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, hands, Fingers and thumbs, your neck, your head, your face, the inside of your mouth. the inside of your head, the inside of your torso, the inside of your legs, the inside of your arms, Now feeling the outer surface of your body, your skin, just beneath your skin, into the fleshy part of your entire body. Into the organs. Into the bones.
now into any sensation that is arising within the field of the physical body. Just let your mind pull into any sensation that arises. You may be moving from place to place as we observe a particular sensation that pulls us. And then we may be pulled by another sensation. And then another. Allow yourself to follow anything that comes up within your awareness. Moving lightly from place to place. Now feeling into experiencing the darkness of the internal body. And we're going to cast some light into the internal body. So from that darkness of the internal, we can feel that we are slowly turning up a dimmer switch. So the inner body starts to illuminate. A slow, steady light, it may start from a single point or it may simultaneously brighten throughout the entire body. Feeling that illumination reaching into all parts of the body, reaching even through the surface of the skin. So the light that we experience on the outside of the body is equal to that of the light inside the body. Now feel into a solidity of the body. We can feel the weight of the body against the floor. We can feel the weight of our bones, of the flesh, of the organs of the blood. We can feel into the object of the body, the mass of the body. Now we're going to feel space starting to pervade the body so it might start from a single point somewhere the center or it may 
just gradually arise throughout the entire body simultaneously. Space reaching from a point to the periphery or just gradually pervading the whole body. So we feel that the mass of the body is being dissolved into space, being dissolved into the space around us. the boundary of the body dissolves. We are unlimited. We are moving from form to formless. Now bring your attention back to your breath. That flow of breath that we can feel into either side of the body, the inside, the outside. We can feel where we draw the breath from. We can feel where we draw the breath to. And then as you feel into the breath, allow the breath to bring you into your body, to feel the form once again of your body, to feel the form of your limbs and torso and head. to feel the support of the floor beneath you, to feel the contact of your clothing, any blankets, to be able to feel into being. We're going to take a few cycles of breath now where we really follow the breath down deep into the body. If we can, we're going to draw the breath all the way through the body to the feet, out to the fingertips, to the head, to feel that the breath pervades the whole body. We're then going to bring a little light movement, a little explorative extension out into the fingers, out into the toes, so they may just be stretching and moving a little. The toes are moving a little. And we're going to repeat to ourselves now. My yoga nidra practice is complete. And we're going to follow that repetition with a couple of expressive, spacious breaths. 
Allowing the breath to return to its natural flow. You may slowly bend your knees, place your feet to the floor. And then you may gently roll yourselves onto your right side and pause there. And then gently roll over onto your other side and pause there. And then in your own time, you can slowly bring yourselves up from your side, come to a comfortable seated posture. And we're going to close the class together. So, you know, take your time. We will all wait for each other. So don't rush. So we're going to chant Om three times together. So you may bring your hands into Anjali Mudra. So bringing your hands to your heart, closing your eyes. Let's take a deep inhalation to prepare. Om. Thank you all very much. Namaste, Namovaha. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll come over and unmute you guys. Bear with me.